So we move on to building the LFS cross tool chain and temporary tools. And this is where we actually start to get to grips with building the actual system. So tool chain technical notes, as I said previously, this is the uh, very technical document about how the cross compilation works. Uh, I'm not going to go into that, uh, but that does take some uh, reading. It's worth reading it several times to fully comprehend it. Right, so there's some information on how to compile. Uh, read this and make sure you understand it before you carry on because it is critical you get this right. I'll, I'll be making a point of each of these steps as I go through the first few packages uh, and eventually you'll get the idea of what, what needs to be done. And it will just become habit after that. So first of all, just double check we've got LFS set. We have, and I say it goes through. What well, it says, make sure the host system requirements are set. You, you've not got a hope really of completing LFS unless you guarantee that you've followed the host system requirements. Um, you're effectively on your own if you've decided to ignore that, because if you come to ask for help, the first thing is likely to be asked is like is everything okay you know is uh, did, you, did does your host system meet the requirements if they're not you're, you're going to be told to go and you know fix that basically i think so it's important that you have met those requirements and then some instructions on how to actually compile each package and it may seem monotonous and a bit repetitive sometimes but it's the only way of guaranteeing a clean environment and ensuring that the build is done correctly. So bin utils pass one. Um, so let's change into LFS sources and we extract bin utils because that's the first package, the first package we want to build. Change into it. Once we've changed into it, now we can start following the instructions. And the first thing it tells us to do is to make a temporary directory. So we make the directory, change into it. If I can cope with this mouse that seems to, I'm not sure it's got a bit of fluff in the lens or something of the optical sensor. And then it says to get the SBU to time the commands that are used to build bin utils. So let's do that time open curly bracket, copy and paste this configure command. When you're copying and pasting, just double check that you've actually copied from the beginning and you've captured everything up to the end. It's sometimes quite easy to miss a single character and it might go unnoticed until uh, sometime later on in the compilation process. Join these together with a double ampersand so that the next command only continues if the first command continues. Uh, first command completed successfully and I think on this machine it would take a minute and a half two minutes or so as I remember from past builds so we'll time that so this is configuring the build at the moment and then now it's building with the make command and it should be running on 16 of the logical course so I'll just get another tab up and run top and yes, I can see it's, yeah, there you go. They're all running at 30 odd percent or so. So that proves that each core is being utilized. So that's all good. In fact, I'll stop that. There's no point in having that running. Okay, that's, all oh, right, that's a lot quicker than I thought. So it's 37 seconds. So I know that an SBU for this system is 37 seconds. So it's a bit of an awkward number to calculate in your head, but it gives us a general idea uh, that one SPU is about uh, two thirds of a minute approximately. So that's all complete. Once we're complete, we just go back to the sources directory and tidy up. And that's it. That's our first package built. And we can move on to the next one, which is GCC. So once again, I've extracted the package, I change into the package. 
once I'm in the packages directory, I can start reading the instructions. And the first thing to do is to extract some other packages we've got and rename what's been created by extracting them. Okay, and then for 64 bit hosts, rename the libraries. So you can run this on 32 bit host. It's got a section here which checks the architecture. So it won't matter, it just won't do anything. But if you're unsure, you can put that in and it won't harm anything. It'll just, it just knows what to do. So we make another temporary build directory and run this big configure command to start or, or set up the build. And again, there's all the explanation and now we can run this build. I'm just going to time this. It's supposed to take approximately three SBU. So in theory, that's about three minutes. So we'll see what happens.
Okay, so it's taken just over five minutes, so it's a reasonable um, estimate of the SBUs. So now we just install GCC Pass 1. And it says something we hear about um, some internal system head headers, um, but one doesn't exist. Um, so the internal header has just been installed as a partial self-contained file does not include the extended features of the system header. So we create a full version of the internal header using this command here. So CD back up one level. And then this command here will recreate that file. And that's the end of that one. Move on to the Linux API headers. So once again, we've extracted the package, change into it, and then we can start reading the commands, uh, reading the instructions and typing in the commands for that package. So make headers. Right, I've just blown the sensor on the mouse and it looks like it was a bit of fluff there because this mouse is not jiggling around so much now. copy those files into the correct place and that's that done and now we move on to glibc 2.4 so once again extract it change into it and then start following the instructions so we've got symbolic links required here and as you can see it selects whether to put one in for 32 bit or 64 bit and does that automatically so same command regardless of whether um, you're on 32 bit or 64 bit so i've got a patch to put in that's done create a temporary build directory change into it, add another option blocks for into the config and then prepare the configuration. And build it. So let's see how long this one's estimated to take. Just over 1.3 SBUs. So it says there have been reports this package may fail when you run as a parallel make. Um, it has happened to me, but many, many years ago, um, probably over 10 years ago, I've never seen it fail since then, but um, maybe it does still happen occasionally.
Right, so yes, that's about um, what was expected, 1 minute 20. So let's install. There's a warning here about if you haven't set LFS properly and your building has roots, then it will destroy your host system. So we're not root and we have got LFS set correctly, which we can check anyway. As you can see, so that's fine. So we can run this command. Confident we won't damage anything on the host. Okay, we've just got a fix to put in. And then it says there's some checks here we can do to check that everything's working so far as it, as expected. So this command here should produce the output in the gray box below. So requesting program interpreter lib64 ld linux x8664.so.2 so that's all correct so that looks good that gives us some confidence that what we've done so far is working correctly so that's all complete we can tidy that up gipc and move on to lib standard c++ which is from gcc 14.2.0 so we need to extract the gcc tarball here as it says here, and then change into the directory as per usual. And then create a temporary directory again. Oops, that didn't copy correctly, did it? And prepare it for compilation. Build it. And install it. And there's some archive files that need to be removed. And that's done. So tidy that up. And we move on.